Okay, on the web page there are three papers listed. Okay, I will refer to them as one, two, and the paper on optics. If you read papers one and two and understand them, then there's no need for me to give these lectures. Okay, <laughs> so it's all there. Okay, what I hope I will do is give a more, perhaps a, a somewhat uh, more coherent account. But the material is all there, and I will refer to papers for details as we go along. Okay, so today we are going to talk about periods, and most of the discussion will be in the context of an example. Most of what I say is in fact very general and ties in very well with the other lectures in this series. Um, and the general context is the le other lectures are Batarev. But I will be very concrete and stick for the main part with the manifold M, which is a quintic in P4 and has an equation sum xi to the 5, i is 1 to 5, minus 5 psi product xi is 0. Um, I will towards the end, not today, but I will talk about uh, another similar example, which is uh, in, my, in some ways more interesting, the optic, but for the moment we will stick to this. So this is xi, 5 coordinates, 5 homogeneous coordinates, i equals 1 to 5, and the whole <coughs> thing takes place in P. Now, psi is a parameter, thank you. So this is a one-parameter family. We'll be very concerned with looking about this as a function of, uh, looking at quantities as functions of a parameter. Okay. So why have we chosen this uh, manifold? Well, there are various method, various reasons to do with mirror symmetry, but for the moment, it's a particularly simple type uh, of uh, well-studied threefold. Um, it's kalabi yau which means that it has vanishing first churn class, and that for us means there exists a holomorphic 304. Called omega, so there's a 304 um, thought of over C, there's a, 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 a three form which has three holomorphic indices, no anti-holomorphic indices, and the, 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 the main claim to fame of this three form is it's not non-singular and it vanishes nowhere. Okay. Okay. Also, this is a particularly symmetric manifold, so if you take the coordinates xi, and you multiply them by arbitrary fifth, well, not arbitrary, fifth roots of unity. <coughs> so multiply them by powers of alpha, where alpha to the fifth is one. And if we arrange that the sum of the powers is zero mod five, then you see that this leaves these terms alone, it leaves this term alone, and so the manifold is invariant, and this gives a group, and I'm conscious here, so this gives an automorphism group of M, and as a, an abstract group, this is, well, it, 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 it's isomorphic to what the physicists call Z5, okay, um, sorry, this, is, this habit's too deeply ingrained to, 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 to switch easily. Um, Z5 sometimes means the uh, five attic integers, okay, but not in this context, and sometimes it means what mathematicians write as z over 5z. Okay. So uh, here it means z over 5z. Okay. okay, now these, this is a particularly symmetric manifold, and one could do something more general. In particular, we could deform M into something more general. So we could take the polynomial, let's give this a name. So this is 
Right, good, good question. Right, it looks as if I've made a mistake, but I haven't. Okay. Um, this condition cuts it down from 5 to 4, but there's still, you can still multiply all the x's by, by taking combinations, you can multiply all the x's by a common phase, which is trivial in the P4. So in fact, as a group, it's, it has 125 elements. Okay. We can deform P to something that's less symmetric. We can multiply certain coefficients EV, uh, CV times x to the v. x to the v is, 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 is a notation for monomials, product over i, xi to the vi, and the sum of the vi's is 5. So we can deform by adding quintic monomials to P. Okay. And so we take v not equal to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, because I've already counted those deformations in here. There are, I claim, 101, well, there are claim 100 ways of doing this. So, V, you could take to be, well, you could take to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, that's counted in, def in deformations of psi. They're one of those. There are, you could take 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, and its permutations in order uh, to do with the ordering of the factors. There are 20 of those. There's 3, 2, 0, 0, 0. There are 20 of those. 3, 1, 1, 0, 0. 30 of those. 2, 2, 1, 0, 0. 20 of those. And there are some others which we needn't count. So there are others, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, and its permutations, of which there are 20, and 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, of which there are 5. Okay. Now, we don't count those. Um, these ones are, you'll learn, no doubt, from Victor, these are interior to co-dimension 1 faces. of the Newton polyhedron. These are the vertices. Um, a more straightforward explanation is that we are free to make coordinate changes We're free to make coordinate changes on the coordinates, so we can take xi and take xi goes to xi plus xi i of x, where this is something that's linear. And being linear, it's of the form xi i j x j. And most of the time when I repeat an index, it's summed over. So there are 25 degrees of freedom in these coefficients, and we wouldn't want to call this a genuine change, and this has the effect on the polynomial that it changes p to p, p of x to p of x plus xi, which is p of x plus xi i pi. And so we generally consider deformations up to an ideal <coughs> i, which is generated by the partials p comma i of the of the polynomial and as I said there are 25 degrees of freedom in this and you can use that to set these 25 terms down here equal to zero to eliminate those. Excuse me, shouldn't uh, one of those flanks be a third? Uh, one plus flank two two one oh. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, if you sum as far as here, then, and we leave, well, if you sum as far as there, you get 101. Okay? And that's 100, that means there are 101 ways of deforming this structure. And 
This tells us that there, in fact, that the Hodge number H21, which counts the number of complex structure deformations, is 101. I mean, that's a bit naive, but in this, in this case, it works well. Okay. So the Hodge numbers for this manifold, there's one zero zero form, there are no one forms, there are no two zero forms, there's the Kähler form of the P4 gives you the one one form, there's one three zero form, which is the omega, which is very important, there are 101 two one forms, 101 one two forms, which are the complex conjugates, and the complex conjugate of omega. And then the structure repeats by duality. So the Hodge diamond for the manifold looks like that, and this is something that we'll have occasion to come back to. It turns out that there's a very pretty construction. So very important in this is the existence of this form omega. There's a very pretty construction. So we can take P4. In here, we have this hypersurface defined by the vanishing of P. And we can construct omega in a very nice sort of way. So one way of doing that is you take the volume form on P4 sine i, j, k, l, m, x, i, d, x, j, d, x, k, d, x, l, d, x, m. That's the natural volume form on CP4. And for the once in my life, I don't think you need to sum over the indices. Um, you can sum over the indices, but it doesn't matter. All these factors are equal. Okay, whatever your choice of indices, as long as they're all different. We take the natural volume form on P4, we divide it by P of x. Now notice that when you do that, it's something rather remarkable happens. That this volume form on P4 is not actually a volume form on P4, because if you scale the coordinates, it scales. Okay, so it lives in some bundle over the P4. However, when you divide by P of x, P of x scales in the same way as the top line. So this object is singular but is well defined over P4. Okay. So now we perform a contour integration around the surface P equals naught. We integrate out one of the x's, choose your favorite x, integrate it out. What we are left with is fairly obviously a holomorphic object, and it's going to have three holomorphic indices, and that's omega. Okay. And in fact, you can do the integral, right? So this is epsilon i, j, k, l, m, x, i, d, x, j, d, x, k, d, x, l, over partial d, p, d, x, m. Okay. And so again, all those objects, there are various choices of indices, all those objects are equal to each other. So if, you don't, if it looks not covariant, it looks no covariant, you can, but nevertheless you make a different choice, choice of indices, and the derivation shows you that they're all in fact the same. And it shows you that it's non-singular, by the way, because if you don't like writing it this way, this way is good unless dp dxm is zero. But now I change the indices and put another partial on the bottom, and that shows you that, it's non, that it, 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 the omega exists unless all the partials have a common zero, and that doesn't happen if the manifold is smooth. Okay. okay. Now, important in everything is the variation of complex structure. And one way of thinking of the complex structure is that omega is a, whatever it else it is, it lives in H3. It's a three form. And H3 is a big space with dimension 204. In this case, if you sum across these numbers, 
is 204. So in this big 204 dimensional space, there's a line corresponding to H30. So it's a one dimensional space, which is the line corresponding to H30. And as you vary the parameters of the manifold, you change what you mean by holomorphic and anti-holomorphic. And this line moves around inside the big space. And it, it's good to keep track of that. So one way of keeping track of that is through the periods. So if we take, say, <coughs> top, I'm going to violate my, my own conditions in a minute, but if we take a, a, a topological basis, an integer basis of, of homology cycles, then we can integrate omega over that, and we're essentially getting the Cartesian coordinates of this line in H3, and that gives us, if you like, a canonical set of coordinates. There are two sets of coordinates, and somehow, one's, when one's taught physics, one's always taught that nothing depends on the coordinates, right? There are two sets of coordinates you can use to parameterize the complex structure. One are the algebraic coordinates, the coordinates that are present, the coefficients in the defining polynomial, and the others are these periods. And of course, one set is a function of the other set. Now, somehow, that transformation from the algebraic coordinates to the periods is very important. Okay. And, and certainly, in, in, with regards to mirror symmetry, it's, 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 it's a very important uh, feature. Anyway, so if you'd like, this is a canonical set of objects, the periods. Well, I'm now going to... You could choose you could choose a topological basis. Right? You could choose an integer basis. I'm now going to violate what I say and choose a different basis. Okay? Okay. So, there are students here, I'm told. So, exercise, well, something that the student should actually follow through, right? So, one should at least calculate one easy period. Right? So, one thing you can do, so let's calculate A period, F0, okay, and we put in the scale of pi, the scale of omega doesn't matter, so I'm free to adjust a, a constant here, and what I'm going to do now is we take x1, dx2, dx3, dx4, over dp, dx5, and I'm going to integrate this over C2 cross C3 cross C4, where Ci is the curve mod Xi is epsilon. Okay, so integrate this over a product of three small circles. Okay, so um, this is one of those integrals, it's easier to complicate it before you do it. So minus 5 Psi over 2 pi I to the fourth, and put back the x5 integral, x1 dx2 up to dx5 over p, right? You see what I've done? I've just said that the 1 over 2 pi i times dp dx5 came from integrating x5, so now we go c2 cross up to c5. Okay. Now, one more trick which is that that integral looks as if it depends on x1, right? But in fact, that's a delusion, right? The top line scales in the same way as the bottom line. I can make a change of scale on the x's that sets x1 to 1, right? It doesn't actually depend on x1. Yes? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, if it doesn't depend on x1, then nothing stops me doing this. Okay? No one, no one stops me doing that identity and slipping that under the integral sign. Okay? So this is, in fact, minus 5 psi over 2 pi i to the fifth, integral dx1, up to dx5, c1 cross c5 over p. Okay? Okay. 
minus 5 psi over 2 pi i to the fifth integral physicist notation d 5 x. Okay. And the polynomial, which I've conveniently just rubbed off, never mind. Um, can we still see that? Um, the polynomial on the bottom line we can write as what? Uh, five, no, we can't. Five psi product of the x's times here one minus sigma xi to the fifth over five psi product of the x's, like that. Okay. So this is five. There's a minus there. That and that cancel with that. Um, so this is one over two pi i. We're almost finished. One over two pi i to the fifth integral d five x over product of the x's. And then here we get sum r is naught to infinity sigma x i to the fifth to the r over 5 psi product of the x's to the r. Okay. C1 cross, cross C5. Okay, so this is a sort of integral that's fun to do. Okay. We will only get a contribution, right? So here we have dx over x five times. We're only going to get a contribution if there's a term in here which cancels the product of the x's down here. Okay? Otherwise, Cauchy's theorem gives, tells us everything is zero. And that only happens, so the terms up there, there'll be a term, every x has to enter the, the same power, so you'd have to have xi to the fifth to the r over five, and that can only happen if r is 5m. So, are the only R's that contribute are the ones that are multiples of 5. And when that happens, then there'll be a term in here, product xi to the fifth to the m. And on the bottom line, it'll be 5 psi to the m product of x's to the 5m. So that's good. And the coefficient, well, it's the multi-polynomial coefficient that gives, uh, raises each xi to the fifth to the power of m, so that will be 5m factorial over m factorial to the fifth. And so you see that you get here sum m is naught to infinity, 5m factorial over m factorial to the fifth, lambda to the m, where lambda is 1 over 5 psi to the fifth. Okay? So, we've evaluated our first period. Okay, so put that over here. So, there's a period, F0, which is the sum m is naught to infinity, 5m factorial over m factorial to the fifth, lambda to the m. You have to, this, this term, right, you'll only get a, a contribution to this integral if there's a term in the top line that exactly cancels what's on the bottom line. Okay. For that to happen, you have to get there. So you have to take this R and distribute it over the five terms in equal amounts. So it has to be R, to the, R over five, and that can only happen if R is itself a multiple of five, and so R is 5M. Okay, 
So this is our hypergeometric function, as you can see by all the factorials. So um, you always introduce, when you deal with hypergeometric functions, you always introduce the logarithmic derivative. Now, theta is lambda dd lambda. And so I leave it as an exercise. Right? You show that L f0 is 0, where L is the operator theta to the fourth minus 5 lambda product i is 1 to 4, 5 theta plus i. Okay. Easy. Okay. Now, that was easy. Um, that, in fact, is about the only easy calculation um, that I know how to do. That's There's a more general way of finding the periods. Okay. And that is the observation that the periods can all be realized by doing the following. You take d5x, you take a contour here, gamma, that I will explain. Um, you take a polynomial or a monomial x to the m, and you divide it by, this part, by the, our polynomial p, to the power 1 plus 1 fifth the degree of m. And we apply this to monomials m whose degree is a multiple of 5. Okay. And this is an integral in C5. So we take C5. We take five curves where the partials of p vanish. And we assume that they, those curves intersect only in the origin of C5. Okay. And then we take contours, CI, little circles around each of, those, each of those contours. And gamma here is C1 cross C2 cross, cross C5. Okay. M is any monomial of degree who uh, degree a multiple of five. Okay, and as M ranges over all possibilities, so you get the possible periods. This will give you all the periods. Okay. Now, you one can work out. So the the, the, the key words are the dwarf Griffiths cats. Cats method, though I think I learned this from Bob, I think. Um, okay. Now, there's a procedure for evaluating the differential equations to which, the, the easiest way to proceed now is rather than try and evaluate the integrals in closed form, is to find the differential equations that they, these functions solve and then solve the differential equations. Um, the differential equations are simplified by the observation that if we consider monomials x to the v, we said that our original polynomial was invariant under an automorphism group G. And that these monomials x to the v are not invariant under G in general. And indeed, they transform under G in a certain way. So x to the v will transform in a certain representation of g. And q x to the v, q is x to the 1, is this fundamental monomial x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, that we say, we mention so often, we give it a special name, we call it q. Okay. Um, x to the v and qx to the v transform in the same way. Those all transform in the same way, but apart from that, the x to the v's transform differently. Okay. And... Uh, yeah. So, we should be running over homology basis, but you're saying this is equivalent somehow, right? 
Now, I will say a bit more on what it's equivalent to. Right. But uh, there should be two hundred four of those. Yes. So which, what, I will count them now. Okay. Okay. But what I'm saying is that this will break up into a system of differential equations, and the dish of differential equations will break up according to the transformation under G. Okay. So, for example, 1, Q, Q squared, and Q cubed will, in fact, be the four solutions. This will be associated with the four solutions of this differential equation, L, that we just wrote down. So we wrote down over here a differential equation that was satisfied by one of the periods. That equation has four solutions. Okay. If you like, the solution that we wrote down is the one where x to the m is the monomial 1. Okay. But it has three friends. Okay. And those three friends are the other solutions of the differential equation. And those are also all periods. And those are also all periods. Okay. There's also... You can take the monomial x to the v, where v is a quintic. So this is a hundred. There are a hundred of these. These are the quintic v's. And they're friends q x to the v. And that leads to a hundred differential equations of degree two. And the process stops. Why, why do I not put more, more terms here? So w one observation, of course, is that if you differentiate, if you differentiate with respect to psi, if you differentiate 1 over p with respect to psi, then this is the same thing because of p, uh, the psi, right, p is the sum of the fifth powers, minus 5 psi times this fundamental monomial q. So differentiating with respect to psi just puts a q on top like that. So differentiating with respect to psi just multiplies it by q. So if you like, the, this is like differentiating with respect to psi. Um, you can take the period that starts with x to the v. You can differentiate it. You get this object. If you differentiate it again, you get into the ideal. Okay, so the process stops here. Again, similarly, if you try and add q to the fourth here, you're into the ideal. And so the process stops. Right, so we could consider... So what I mean is it is sufficient to consider... It's sufficient to consider integral d at d five x times one over p q over p squared q squared over p cubed and q cubed over p to the fourth. Okay, and it's also and it's sufficient and in addition d five x x to the v over p squared and q x to the v over p cubed. Okay. And the count there is 204. Okay. Um, and as I say, you'll discover, and the details are all in paper one in hideous and gory detail. Um, you will discover that by studying these integrals, that they all satisfy the same differential equation. Okay. And that, that differential equation is the, this fourth order differential equation, L, and that these two integrals satisfy the same differential equation, and this is LV. And if you follow through, and the energetic student should do this, right? LV is a hypergeometric equation of degree 2, Peter, Peter minus 1 plus CV minus 5 to the fifth to lambda, Peter plus AV, Peter plus BV. Okay. So our 
tables would have tables somewhere. So our V's were 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, 3, 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, 1, 0, 0. The corresponding A, B's and C's are 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 1, 1 fifth, 4 fifths, 4 fifths, 1, 1 fifth, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths. In all cases, C is A plus B. Okay, so this is, oh, I'm sorry, these are the A, B, and C's that occur in this, in this thing, and you recognize this as the hypergeometric equation corresponding to A, B, C, 1 over psi to the fifth. So you get, so the statement is there's one differential equation of degree 4 and 100 differential equations of degree 2. And 100 differential equations of degree 2 involve our friend the usual hypergeometric equation. Okay, there's 2F1. No, 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 I can do it. It's easy. Okay. Two F one A B C Z is uh you know we we said there is more than more than two gamma A plus N, gamma B plus N. Gamma C plus N. Okay. Okay, now I recently taught a course in Les Ouches and everybody was fantastically selected and it was it's supposed to be fantastically high level and people knew all sorts of string theory and conformal field theory and number theory and what have you and then I asked if people knew how to extract the logarithmic solutions of differential equations, and that has all been forgotten. Okay. What is the reason for studying this particular family of hyperservices? The, oh, the reason for studying the particular family of hyperservices is that they have interesting arithmetic. Okay, and the arithmetic will be related to the periods. So we just have to write down a load of stuff about the periods, and then the miracle will be that when we actually start counting points, that the number of points will be given by the periods. Okay, so that's the, that's the interesting feature. Okay. okay. So, this being so, I remind you how we solve the equations L pi equals zero, where L is our fourth order operator that we've rubbed off. L is theta to the fourth minus five lambda product I is one to the four, five theta plus I. Okay? So we're supposed to solve the homework problem, solve this system of equations. Right? So there's something called the method of Frobenius. Frobenius did lots of things. <coughs> method of Frobenius. And Frobenius says you look for a power series solution, you look for a solution pi of lambda and epsilon is, and this, is, this will be important, so we're going through the tedium of this because it is actually important for something that we want to say later. n equals naught to infinity, a n of epsilon lambda to the n plus epsilon, remember. Okay, you allow yourself a bit of freedom with a parameter epsilon. Okay. And now you solve, you, 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 you substitute into this equation lambda pi epsilon is naught. 
and you keep track of coefficients of lambda to the n plus epsilon. And of course, remember that the nice thing about this operator theta is that theta lambda to the m is m lambda to the m because theta is lambda d d lambda. Okay. So we get a condition n plus epsilon to the fourth a n of epsilon minus five product over i five n plus epsilon minus five plus i a n minus one is zero. You see where that comes from, right? The theta to the fourth brings down this n plus epsilon to the fourth minus five lambda. So to get lambda to the n plus epsilon, you start with the next term down. Okay, so the eigenvalue then is five n plus epsilon minus five. Okay, plus i. Okay, so this gives us that a n is. Now, so I, I take this, write this on the other side, divide by this, and multiply top and bottom by n plus epsilon. Five n plus epsilon, product one to four, five n plus epsilon plus i minus five over n plus epsilon to the fifth times a n minus one. And notice that this n plus epsilon that I just put in is in fact the i equals five term in here. If I put i equals five, this is zero. So this is just the i equals five term in there. And so when I solve this recursively, it's going to give me that a n epsilon is gamma 5n plus 5 epsilon plus 1 over gamma to the fifth n plus epsilon plus 1. And then you can adjust a constant. So gamma to the fifth epsilon plus 1 over gamma to the 5 epsilon plus 1 times that. And then I've adjusted it so that a0 is 1. a0 Because, right, but we're trying to pick out the term, we're trying to keep track of the term lambda m plus epsilon. Okay, so because of this lambda here, that comes from differentiating the n minus 1 term down here. Okay, so we've got that, so we've got that. And in fact, what we've done, so we, we solve these equations. Now there's a step which is I'm supposed to solve this equation for n equals naught, right? And if we, and you write down the indicial equation, let's, if we just do this and apply this, a naught is one and a n is this for n greater than or equal to one, so n greater than or equal to naught, a n is that, then you don't quite solve the equation. Right? And if you think about it, what you've done is you what you've done is you've got a series lam, l pi lambda epsilon is everything works except the n equals naught term, and the n equals naught term doesn't work because there's no a minus one, and you just get theta to the fourth acting on lambda to the epsilon. So in fact, with these constants, what you've succeeded in doing is finding a solution to that equation, that L pi lambda epsilon is epsilon to the fourth lambda to the epsilon. Okay, And that's good because if I set epsilon is zero, then of course I get a solution to the differential equation. And that was in fact precisely the solution we wrote down before. Okay, If you set epsilon is zero, this becomes 5n factorial over n factorial to the fifth, and you're happy. However, we can now start differentiating with respect to epsilon. Okay? If you differentiate with respect to the epsilon, you take a derivative, then you get epsilon cubed over here. It still vanishes if you set epsilon equal to zero. So the successive derivatives, the derivatives up to and including the third derivative, 
solve the equation. Okay? If you take four derivatives, then it's no longer a solution. But, so the story is that pi and its uh, first three derivatives solve the differential equation. Okay. And because of the lambda to the power epsilon, differentiating lambda to the epsilon brings down logarithms, then we will get, you get, you start picking up, when you differentiate with respect to epsilon, you have to differentiate with respect to the epsilon in here, and you get complicated coefficients, but you also have to differentiate with respect to the epsilon here, you get pick up logarithms. So the structure of the solutions is that there's a solution pi zero, which is this solution F zero that we had before. There's a solution pi one, which will turn out to be F zero log lambda plus another series F one. Okay, and I leave it as an example, as an exercise, an interesting exercise to the student to evaluate exercise. Right? Find F one. Then pi 2, there'll be a solution, in this case, with two logarithms, log squared lambda plus 2 F1 log lambda plus <coughs> another series F2. And if you want to, you can evaluate F2 as well. right? And pi 3 is F0 log cubed lambda plus 3 F1 log squared lambda plus 3 F2 log lambda plus F3, okay, where the Fi's are all series, are all power series, okay. And so to answer the question over there, why are we doing this, we will in fact show that the number of points are given, that the, the, the number of points are contained in these series F0, F1, F2. Well, it take, I, 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 how much time do I have? Four minutes. I will, Later. I will start now and, 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 and continue next time. That really is the next lecture. Okay. But since we have four minutes... Okay, so now... Okay, problem. Okay, change gears. Okay. Okay, consider. P of X equals naught. X in the finite field with p elements. Okay. We make psi also belong to fp, so that it makes sense. fp, we take p not equal to 5 to start, not because the coefficient of psi is 5, that's trivial, but because of all the fifth powers in the polynomial, the, the manifold is highly singular when p is 5. So to start, avoid p equals 5. And let nu of lambda be the number of solutions of p of x equals naught x in fp, fp to the fifth. OK, lambda is just a repackaging. Psi. So we count the number of solutions of that equation and we ask how it varies with lambda. And so now, if this is a finite problem, you can, you can write a little mathematica code for low values of p to work it out, right? There are p to the fifth points altogether. And you can write a little routine which tries each of the p to the fifth points and asks whether it solves the equation or not. 
and keep a running track of the, of the answer. So um, the answer is less than p to the fifth. In fact, you will easily find a point that's not a solution. So um, if you expand nu in base p, nu is nu naught plus nu one p plus nu two p squared plus nu three p cubed plus nu four p to the four, where the nu i less than or equal to p minus one. So you can expand the solution like that, and there are four <coughs> coefficients that you want to find all of these functions of lambda. Okay. Now, let me just set, leave an exercise, a good place to leave an exercise. So this is a very definite number that you want to calculate, and we will calculate, but the, C, so the simplest thing to calculate is nu zero. So you want to think of this as piadic expansion, and the simplest thing to calculate is nu zero. So find find nu mod, uh, mod p, okay. and I put it to you that the way to do that is to calculate nu is the sum x in at p to the fifth, 1 minus the polynomial to the power p. Okay? Why is that true? Well, for each x, either x satisfies the polynomial or it doesn't. If it... To the p minus 1. Right. So, have I got this right? 1 minus... Yeah. No, 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 no. No, yeah, I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, two p's, right? Big p is a polynomial, little p is a prime. Okay, x either satisfies the polynomial or it doesn't. If it does, then big p is zero, this bracket is one, you add one to the running total, and that's right. If x does not satisfy the polynomial, then p is not zero, you raise it to the power p minus one, that's 1 mod p, this bracket is 0 mod p, you add 0 to the running total, and that's also right. Okay? Now, I put it to you that this is an easy sum to do. Right? You write p, if p is, is sigma xi to the fifth minus 5 psi product to the xi, right? You raise it to the power p minus 1, it breaks naturally into two terms, you write this out by the binomial series, Okay. You will have powers of xi to the fifth, various powers of this, which you can write out by the multinomial theorem. But it's clear that the inner sum you can do, because if you have an x in fp, and you solve that to some power, and you, you, you sum over x to the n in fp, then this is... Uh, 0 if p minus 1 does not divide n, and it's minus 1 if p, if p minus 1 divides n, right? So, a little thought. But, so, the inner sum you can do. Okay, so exercise and par solving times half an hour. Okay, sum m equals naught to the integer part over p over 5, 5m five factorial over m factorial to the fifth, lambda to the n. Okay. In other words, you take, we could call this, you take f0 and you take p over 5 terms and you evaluate it. Okay. Now, the story is next time that if you want to do better, right, so we've evaluated that, you've evaluated that, we could go on and per by perturbation theory and evaluate this, and then the story will be that you want to take this term to 2p over 5 terms and then include this term. 
And then the next door, you want this one, this one, and this one. So, okay. so thank you.